what's going on? So I finally got around to updating my Retroid Pocket 2 to Android 8.1. So I'm gonna do a little guide and go through some troubleshooting steps, then test some Android games. This turned out to be a lot more difficult than originally anticipated. So if it helped you out or if you enjoy the content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give the video a like and subscribe for more. Now let's get into it. First, I got everything from the Retroid Discord channel, so if you haven't joined that yet, it's full of a lot of helpful people if you get stuck. I'll have it linked in the description. So if you have an early Retroid Pocket 2 unit, you'll have to update to a newer version of the Android 6 before you can update to Android 8.1. So go to the Discord, and there's a channel called Firmware Docs, and in it there's a link to a Google Drive page with everything you need. Once you're there, there's a Word document that says first thing. Open that up and go to the two websites listed in the document and install the drivers how it's told. The first one, you just have to unzip it and extract the files to a known location. I already did this, so I'm just gonna cancel out of it. Then you wanna go into the USB driver folder and just right click on Android underscore winusb.inf and select install. The second site is for more drivers to connect your Retroid Pocket 2 to your PC. You scroll down to where it says download drivers. Once the file is downloaded, you just have to unzip it to somewhere that is known and then go to that folder and select installdriver.exe. That should install it and you should be all good. After you have those installed, you just need to restart your PC. Now if you have one of the first Retroid Pocket 2 consoles, you have to update your version of Android 6, or you can't go on to Android 8 as it won't give you a system key to back up. So go back to the Discord and back to the link in the Google Drive. Then there's a folder that says 6.0. In there is another folder called Retroid Pocket 2 6.0 Upgrade. Go in there and download those files then unzip them into a known place. First, there's a Word file with directions, so definitely take a look at that because there are multiple ways to do this if the first way doesn't work. For the first way, you just have to plug your Retroid Pocket 2 into the computer. Once you do that, you have to go into mouse mode on the Retroid Pocket 2, drag down from the top, tap on USB for charging, change it to file transfers, then go back to your PC. Now go into the Update Method 1 folder and copy the Upgrade Repair APK over to your Retroid Pocket 2's internal memory. I just put it into the download so I know where it would be. Then you can unplug your Retroid Pocket 2 from the computer. Go to where you put the Update APK, tap on it, select Package Installer. It should block the installation. Just go to Settings and toggle on Unknown Sources and try again. It should install the new app, select open, a window should pop up, select repair, and it will start downloading the update. This took about two hours for me, so make sure you have plenty of charge or a charger handy. Once it is complete, select start repairing. And here you have to make sure the unit is plugged into a charger or it'll cancel out of it. It will verify your files, restart, and install the update. When it restarts, it opened up into the Retroid OS. You just have to hold down the home button and select switch systems and it will reboot into Android with the new update. This will take a little while so be patient. Then you're done with the update to the newer version of Android 6 and on to the update to Android 8.1. If this one didn't work, there are two other methods to try and update to the newer version of Android 6. Fortunately, I didn't have to do either of those. Before you start, you're going to want to transfer over any save files or config files you want to continue to use. Make sure you've already installed the USB drivers that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and connect your Retroid Pocket 2 to your PC. 
In the internal storage, you can find the emulator folders and copy what you need to your PC. Now to start on the Android 8.1 update, make your way back to the Google Drive page and download the 8.1 v2 option, then unzip it somewhere you know where it will be. In that download it has an installation guide and I just followed the steps in here, so make sure you take a look at that. Now connect your Retroid Pocket 2 to your PC while it is on and change the settings to file transfer. Go to the RP2 key backup tools folder and run the ADB driver installer.exe. Then click install. Mine already said it was installed for some reason. Then in the same folder, you run the RP2 key backup.batch file and it creates a backup of your device. This is the reason you have to update to the newer version of Android 6 because the earlier model versions wouldn't back up a key. Once that runs, the device underscore key will update with the time it was created, so make sure that happens, otherwise it didn't work. Now on to step 3, unplug your RP2 and turn it off. Then you have to go to the SP flash folder and double click on the flash underscore tool dot exe. An error should occur the first time you open it, just hit OK. For the top option, download agent, select choose, go into the Android 8.1 v2 folder and select mtk underscore all-in-one underscore da dot bin. For the scatter loading file, choose the Android scatter text file and the bottom lines should fill out like I have it here. In the drop down menu, change it from download to format all plus download now, with the Retroid Pocket 2 unplugged from your computer and off, click the download at the top. Then, with your Retroid Pocket 2 off, plug it into your PC. And if everything worked correctly, the bottom bar should start moving. Now here, I had an error occur and I'm not sure why. So first, you should unplug your Retroid Pocket 2 and check to see if it will turn on. If it doesn't turn on, that means it's soft bricked and you have to do some additional steps. So go back to the Google Drive page and read the soft brick page. But basically it says you have to take the back off of your Retroid Pocket 2 and unplug the battery and try again. Sometimes this isn't enough and you have to uninstall the USB drivers from your PC, reinstall them and then restart your PC. To uninstall, go to Device Manager. Select View, Show Hidden Devices, and go down to the Ports, parentheses COM and LPT. There, there should be one that says VCOM. Right click, select Uninstall Device, and check Delete Drivers. Go into the MT65 preloaded driver folder that you downloaded previously. If you're on Windows 10, click through until you get to the Windows 7 64 driver. Then on the USB 2 SER underscore win764.inf, right click and select install. Now restart your PC. Once your PC is restarted, reopen the flash underscore tool.exe and if the files are not already selected, reselect them. Change the drop down back to format all plus download and hit the download button at the top. With the battery still removed from your Retroid Pocket 2, plug it back into your PC. Now the bar at the top should start moving again if the program is working. After this time, mine came up with another error, and I just had to move which USB port I had my Retroid Pocket 2 plugged into, and then it finally worked. After that is complete, you can unplug it from your PC, reinstall the battery, and turn your RP2 back on. It will go through and update the apps and reboot into the Retroid operating system. Just hold down the home button and select switch systems to get back to Android. Next, we have to restore the device key. To do so, plug your powered on Retroid Pocket 2 back into your PC and change it back to transfer files like we have many times. Go into the RP2 key backup tools folder 
and run the rp2 key restore dot batch file. Once it's done, it'll cause your Retroid Pocket 2 to restart. Now that that's complete, you can unplug it again. Now we have to restall all of the default apps and emulators. So go back to the Google Drive into the 8.1 v2 folder, stock apps, and I use the SD card method. So download that and extract it like normal. It is kind of a big file, so it might take a while. Next, remove the SD card from your RP2 and plug it into your PC. In the stock apps folder, there is a folder labeled pre-install. This is the first thing you need to copy over to the SD card. In that same folder, there should be a SD underscore pre-install dot SH. That will also need to be copied over. You can then unplug the SD card and reinsert it into the Retroid Pocket 2 and turn it on. Go to the Toolbox app and select Execute Script. Then select the SD underscore preinstall SH file. It will install all the apps and restart the system. Make sure the apps are there, then you can delete the pre-installed folder from the SD card. And now you're finally done upgrading to Android 8.1 v2. For emulation, all of the pre-installed apps and everything seem to perform about the same, and I haven't had any problems with anything yet. So you're not really going to get an increase in performance for emulation. For the Google Play Store, you have more options for apps and games that required a more recent version of Android, such as GTA. You do have to enable the Play Store in the Toolbox app to access it. Now for some Android game testing. There are a few games that weren't playable on Android 6 even though you could download them, like Super Monkey Ball. This is the first game I'm going to go over. It wouldn't even start up on Android 6. And now on Android 8.1, it opens up just fine and it looks like it would run okay. But it uses gyro controls, so you actually can't play it on the Pocket 2. But I just wanted to show that it opens up now. Next up is Unkilled, and it wouldn't open up on Android 6 either, so updating it made this one playable, and it has full controller support, so it seems like a good one to try out if you're into shooters. Last up here I have Clash of Clans, and it's very playable. It might not be as good as playing it with a touchscreen, but you can make do. There was a little slowdown on the loading screens, but other than that, I didn't have any problems. And then for the YouTube app, it works just fine. The resolution is a little low and the controls aren't the greatest, so it does make some things a little difficult to use. But if you really want to use it, their option is available for you. So is this upgrade worth it? Well, yes and no. You can get it to work right the first time, it seems pretty easy, but for me it took a lot of work and basically an entire day worth of time. 
So if you have spare time, the technical knowledge, and you really want a faster operating system, then go for it. For the pros, the operating system is noticeably faster than before. You have access to more Android games and higher compatibility rate for the apps. And the shortcut actions and cursor mode are a little bit better. For cons, it's really just the installation is a bit complicated and if you have a very early device, it's a lot more work involved that isn't mentioned anywhere in the instructions. I did notice that when downloading something, there's a bit of a buzzing noise that comes from the speakers. I don't know if this is new or if I'm just noticing it, but it's something to be aware of. So if you have the time and patience, I don't really see a reason not to upgrade. But if you lose your patience easily and don't mind how the operating system performs on Android 6, maybe just stick with it. Well, that was my guide on updating the Retroid Pocket 2 to Android 8.1. Let me know if you plan on updating or if it helped you out in the comments. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more tech and gaming videos. Thanks for watching. Oh my god, punch him, please. <laughs> I like, kept missing somehow.